Right then, welcome back to Five. Stephen Alson, everybody's mate, Julian Lorenz is joining me, and we are talking exclusive transfer gossip roundup keywords and stuff like that. So, Julian, let's start in France. PSG have got a new coach, Christophe Gaultier. Who is he, and why should we be caring? Yeah, that's a good question, Stay. I mean, he's the, the Nice manager. He won the league with Lille uh, two seasons ago. It was clearly not the first choice. We all know who the first choice was. It was in Zidane. Zidane. Uh, they could not get him. So Galtier was the second option. He obviously knows very well Luis Campos, the new sporting director in, in, in Paris. He's got credibility because he won the league, because he's done a good job at Saint-Étienne, at Lille, and decently at Nice last season. But this is another, another level. It's PSG with Messi, with Mbappé, with Neymar, with that dressing room. I'm not sure how suited it is to the job, to be honest. I'm, I'm a bit sceptical. I, I will give him some time, but I'm a bit sceptical. And by the way, Pochettino hasn't been fully sacked yet because they can't agree compensation. So yet yeah, they've told to Pochettino, you, you're not going to be there. And he said, OK, I want my check. And they, they, they're discussing the check and how many numbers on the check and how many zeros. But it's actually quite incredible when you think about it that, it, that PSG are publicly talking about Galtier, the new manager, when they haven't even yet sacked and announced Pochettino leaving. It's, cra it's a crazy club. Absolutely crazy, yeah. Of course, I know he was the uh, uh, the, the manager from Nice. Um, is, he, is he a stopgap manager before they do look to appoint um, Zinedine Zidane um, or someone of a, a higher profile, do you think? I think you can you can say it that way. I think the the, the, the well, new yeah, idea, new idea <laughs> yeah. I mean, the new idea they have is less bling bling. So you go for maybe the less bigger names on the bench, the less bigger names on the pitch, and you get maybe more hardworking, better attitude, better mentality, that kind of thing. Which, by the way, they, they told us in 2019 nothing changed. They told us in 2016 nothing changed. So even that, I'm not too convinced yet about. However. Yeah, you're right. I think I think there's certainly something in it that Galtier will sign a two plus one year deal. So two years and then the third one may be an option. And by then, Zidane might be available or Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp or I don't know, whoever whoever else they want, that might be better for them. But for now, I think they want to try that approach of someone who's maybe not as famous or as a bigger name, but who will work hard, who will take no nonsense for the players from the players, and that maybe can bring something a little bit different. I'm just a bit skeptical because I think tactically it's quite basic. What he offered at Lille, I know Lille was successful, but it was still quite basic. And Nice, it was quite basic, and I'm just not sure it's compatible fully with the club. Yeah, and I'm skeptical as well. I've got a very, very strong suspicion that he's probably going to be down the road the second that they're out of the Champions League, seeing as though that seems to be the marker that. They've had some bloody good managers and they've all found their way packed down the road on the back of those similar sorts of results. Um, let's st stick with PSG. Um, there's a lot of talk going on about Neymar and his future. Yeah. What's going on? Well, they want to to sell him. They clearly have opened the door. Not just the door, the windows, the French doors, <laughs> the uh, you know the, the attic thing window. What, what do French Velux? people call French doors, Julian? That's a good question. I, I, I don't think we really have a name apart from just Porte. Uh, or the, 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 you know, but it's all open. The thing is, he <laughs> doesn't really want to go. And you can understand because he's now he's happy with the city. He's happy to play with Mbappé and Messi. He earns 43 million euros a year, which is a lot of money. And I, I'm not sure six months before the World Cup, he would, or even four months, he would want to change that. However, I think... There's also a possibility that he feels, OK, I'm really not welcome here anymore. And maybe it would be good for my career at 30 years old to try something different now. Come to England, go back to Spain, go back to, I don't know, wherever he wants. But this one we need to keep an eye on because I think a club like Chelsea and Todd Bailey, for example, the new, the new owner, if you really want to make a statement straight in, if you go and get someone like Neymar, such a big name, you know, world-class player, even if the last two seasons were a bit... Hit and miss is still Neymar. It's still huge. It would be huge as a move for Chelsea and for Todd Bailey, for example. Same for Newcastle, same for other clubs. So we need to keep an eye on. But right now, is PSG want to sell and he doesn't want to go anywhere. Um, and nicely segued into Chelsea as well. Then we've seen that um, Peter Cech has left his role at Chelsea. Um, do we think there's anything significant in that? I think so. Marina Granovskaya is leaving as well. Also, Bruce Burke, who's leaving. And 
maybe this is not surprising. It's a new owner. There's a new ownership. He wants to come with his guys. He wants to be the big boss. I can understand. I think you're you're moving away some really good talent, especially Granovskaya, who's been fantastic for that club, let's be honest here, and who's highly respected in the world of football in general. I think this is a big loss. I think Peter Cech, in a way, because he knows the club so well, is a big loss. Same for Bruce Burke. I'm surprised a bit. But maybe Todd Burley wants to be the main guy now. Good luck with that, uh, because this is. I think the timing is so wrong. This is the summer where there's so much rebuilding to do at Chelsea. Defensively, mm. you've lost Rudiger, Christensen, Aspilicueta, even if he stays, is 37. Marcos Alonso doesn't really want to be there. So this is the summer where you have that to rebuild. Midfield, Conte is missing one game every two games. Jorginho is 31. You're only left with Kovacic and the rest who you don't really want, the love to cheeks and the Barclays. And then up front, Lukaku is going. He's in Milan tonight. He's, that, that transfer is gone. What are you going to do now? And I think he's, the timing is so wrong for a new team, a, a new owner to come in and try to rebuild all of this, especially with no knowledge of football and European football. So I think it's quite worrying, to be fair. And I don't know where you go from here, to be honest. Yeah, United have been criticised, and, and maybe that's right. Maybe it's maybe it's a little bit giddy in terms of lack of transfer activity. But Chelsea's lack of transfer activity is is probably equally as worrying because of, as you mentioned, the names that they've lost. Now there is some talk of them submitting a bid for for Raheem Sterling and also Nathan Aki. Do we think that there's mm. a chance both or either of those could go through? So centre back. It's clearly, it's clearly an area we mentioned that they need to recruit anyway. Even if two whole moves from a back three to a back four, you yeah. basically right now only have Shaloba, Sa, and Thiago Silva. And depending on talent and age, I'm not sure this is really the idea that you have to start a Premier League season and a Champions League season with a World Cup in, in the middle with the defenders. So you try Jules Koundé, but like in January, you kind of struggled. Now it looks like you moved to Milan Skriniar from Inter, who's already quite advanced in his negotiation with PSG. So again, you, 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 know, you left a lot of work to be done there. Nathan Ake, okay, but Nathan Ake is, is a second, slight third option at City. Really, do you think this is good enough for Chelsea? I'm, I'm not convinced. And by the way, he was a Chelsea player not that long ago. So I find this one a bit crazy. For Ryan Sterling, he's clearly been offered to different clubs. Chelsea is one of them. I think personally... Whether it's him or Dembele, they need someone who will who will beat his opponent one on one. I think they need that kind of guy who makes those differences. They don't really have that in the in the squad right now. We know that Dembele is clearly between Barcelona and Chelsea. It will be one or the other. I don't think there's anyone else anymore in that race. So they have a chance of Dembele. Would you do both Sterling and Dembele? I'm not too convinced. I think this is this is similar players in 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 a way. I don't know. I think Tuchel loves Dembele. I think he's clearly someone he wants to work with again after the, the great year they had together at Dortmund. Mm. And for Sterling, I think Sterling is a safe is a safe bet. He, you know, he's not too expensive. He's still young. He's an English international player. He's had loads of experience. Yeah, of course, you can say that he's not clinical enough in front of goals. There's still a lot of room to do, a, a lot of work to do, room for work from improvement. But he's a proven, established, really good Premier League player. And only got a year left on his contract as well, which should mean yeah. that he's probably a pretty good price. Nathan Ake, I agree. I find it a very intriguing one. Um, I don't think he's going to get a sniff at City. I think he probably wants to play. And I reckon he looks at Chelsea's lack of centre-half options and he goes, do you know what? I know the club. I could probably get back in there. Thiago Silva's not going to have very long left at all, if, even if he completes another season. I mean, he's, he's impressed me and actually proved me very wrong. I thought it would be a total failure. Um, I thought he would have been too long cruising at PSG. There's no way he's going to be up for the fight in the Premier League. And, and he was, and he's been absolutely brilliant for them since. Whether that's because of a back three or been aided by a back three, very interesting to see if they do mm. switch to a back four, how he could cope in that, because it would be a I different agree. Um But Nathan Ake, I think he could look at what's going on at Chelsea and go, yeah, do you know what? I back myself to get into that team. Um, and But don't tell me that right now you can't go and get someone better. If you're Chelsea and if you're Thomas Tuchel, and especially if they really have the money that the owners promised to invest in the squads, you can't get better than Aki. I mean, I like him. I think he's a good player. He's a good yeah. guy. Right attitude. Left-footed, which is obviously a big plus. But don't tell me you can't get better than that. I don't believe that. Second. When have we seen American owners go and do that, though? 
This is the yeah. in no more. This might be, you know, the start of an American ownership at Chelsea, and things might get very different. I, if I was Chelsea yeah. fans, I'd be worried because this is a big pivotal summer for this. Is this going to be a sign of things to come, or is uh, you know are they going to continue with what they've had for the last twenty or so years? Which you know, as a Chelsea fan, you must have been absolutely loving the last twenty years. Like the, I think, the, I think they might be the most successful club in England in the last tw two decades. So, um, yeah, for sure. And you know what? They will they will pick a sporting director, whether that's Michael Edwards who I think would be, I don't know if he would go after, to Chelsea after Liverpool, but I think he's obviously an outstanding candidate. Whether you go to Maxwell, for example, who is someone else they've, they've, they've been speaking to, who obviously did that kind of job more as an assistant uh, when he was at PSG, but still he has a lot of network, he lot, he's got a lot of contacts, and he's, he's a really, he, he presents well, he speaks five languages or six languages, you know, he's, Maxwell I think is a good shot. But is he ready for this kind of rebuilding job that we've mentioned? It's such a crucial summer, as mm. we've been explaining. That, And I think before even thinking about who you're getting, get your sporting director. This is what we said all the time. You know, even at Newcastle, before getting a new manager, get your sporting director so they're on the same page. And it's the same here. Get your sporting director first, and then him and Tuchel can establish the identity and what you want. And then you go and get those players. The problem is time is running out. How long do you want to uh, to start to get the right people in place and then go and spend your money? So I think time is really ticking for Chelsea right now. Yep, and I'm sure there's going to be... I'm sure there'll be moves at Chelsea. I'm sure there's going to be loads more moves in the Premier League. I mean, there's some been breaking just right now before this afternoon, but we're not talking about them today. We'll talk about them <laughs> another time. But Julian, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Hope you're well. You. Yeah, thank you and, so uh, much. And cheers for you lot for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe. We have got all sorts coming out over the summer. So make sure to keep it locked to five and we'll see you in the next one. Laters.